Football Show on Off the Ball with Sky. Watch Premier League, Women's Super League, EFL, Scottish Premiership, and much more live on Sky Sports. I'm prepared to anything I can. Well, to do play it then. Again. Do it then. What about your start to the game? I was, it wasn't bad, was it? <laughs> Why should it be an honest answer be a mistake? How can a modern day manager not have a mobile phone? Why should he? Oh. Welcome on Football Show. No football today in Qatar, so Kevin Kilban joins us. I suspect there isn't a sober journalist in the entire country. Kevin, hello. Hi, Joe. Uh, no, I've, I've, I've always told you it's a quiet place here in Qatar. There's nowhere to find any drink, so no, <laughs> it's all quiet. I've I, told have you no that doubt. Before. I have no doubt. Uh, what a couple of days since I last spoke to you. So our yeah. quarterfinals are complete. On Friday, we'll have Croatia-Brazil. That's 3 o'clock Irish time. We have the Dutch against Argentina, 7 o'clock Friday evening. And then Saturday, Morocco through. They play Portugal at 3 o'clock. And then England, France, 7 p.m. on Saturday. So you would have to say at a glance, that is a pretty open, tasty quarterfinal lineup, is it not? Yeah, it is. Um, well, I, I think realistically, Al, we, we got seven out of the eight teams that we expected to go through. I, the only one I fancied really out of all those, and it's, I'm not blow me on trumpet Joe as you know but I fancied Morocco to beat Spain I really did I, I thought Morocco have got a little bit about them I think they've got a bit of pace I think they've got a bit of power and I thought they'd have too much to Spain in the end and maybe they were a little bit lucky on winning on penalties but um, I fancied them um, outside that I think we've got as you say very very tasty last eight and um, I think you can probably flip a coin and, and that's the way it is I think that's the way it should be at a World Cup It'll be little things in games that will probably turn the game. And um, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be special. I, I, I do think, I, I even look back to when I was a kid watching World Cups in 86 and 90 and 94 and, and all these World Cup um, quarterfinals, there was always maybe four or five shocks and four or five teams that you didn't expect to make a quarter or a semi final. And here, it's not the case. It's the best teams that's going to be playing for it. So it will it, be great. Mm. Let's start with Portugal then. The Ronaldo situation obviously uh, dominated proceedings yesterday with the greatest respect to Morocco, but then Ronaldo sort of has that power. The genesis of this seems to be on Friday when he was subbed off with 25 minutes to go against South Korea and he started mouthing on the bench and giving out on the bench in a fashion that we have seen before from Cristiano Ronaldo. Now afterwards... He said that he was talking about one of the Korean players who had told him to hurry up when he was being substituted. I think the gist yeah. of what he was, um, lip readers and various people uh, looking on, he seems to have been giving out about somebody in, being in a big hurry to get him off the pitch. And so he said, no, it's talking about the Korean player, not the manager. Now, Santos came out afterwards and said, uh, I didn't like it. And not at all. I really did not like it when he had looked at the images. And he's dropped him. So this was quite extraordinary. And I mean, never as a manager felt more vindicated as a 90 minutes unfurled before him, I'd say. Yeah, do, do, you know. honestly, Joe, do, do, you not, do you not think that was more of the excuse of how Portugal were playing? Like Port, Portugal were actually really good. The first two games, they were brilliant. And they, you could quite understandably say they're going to be, they're going to go close in this tournament. They're going to go close. But do you not think the weak link of the team was Ronaldo? I mean, I, again, I, I don't know. I don't know what, what what the thought is, you know, back home. I don't know what everyone's thinking. But I was watching Portugal and I'm watching Ronaldo. And I, I, honestly, I'm half thinking he might get you a goal, but what what is he going to give you when you don't have when you don't have the ball when you don't have possession of the ball? What is he going to give you? Is he going to is he going to work? Is he going to like stretch the team when when you're in possession? What is he going to do? And all of a sudden. Last night, Ramos is in the team, and you're thinking, "Yeah, I can see." It. I was at the game last night, Joe, and I, I, it was it was such a good start actually, the start of the match because down the left hand side, Vargas was for Switzerland was actually causing problems for uh, for Dallo, but not not in the terms of he was it, 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 it was just literally trying to get at him, he was trying to cause problems. But Dallo was, it, I was watching that game. This could be a key battle in the game, and then all of a sudden. Tactically, what, what Portugal did, the kind of uh, Bernardo Silva came down in, into the real base of midfield, even in the, into the back four, the back three, alongside William. And so they, were, they, they had the overload defensively, so they were able to get on the ball, they were able to build a little bit. 
And then as the game went on, Ronaldo Silva went further up the pitch. William stayed quite central. And it was it was almost, in the build-up, it became like a three-man um, defensive attack, if you know what I mean. Two centre-halves, it was Ruben Diaz and Pepe. They split. William dropped deep. And I was watching like William that was coming into, into the base of midfield, collecting the ball, and they were able to build. And that wasn't happening early in the games. All of a sudden, after that, if you, if you looked ahead and you could see what Ramos was doing, all he was doing is running behind. And he was working hard. He was closing down. Yes, he was doing the basic things out of possession. But what it did, it freed Jao Felix, who was it's the best I've seen him play. Like I, I watched him for the very first time live last night. And I come away from that game thinking, Jesus, why the hell did you sign for Let's Go Madrid? You should have gone somewhere else because you are a superstar waiting to happen. He's still, I think he's only 22, 23 now. And he's ready to go on to the next level. I watched him and then I saw Bernard, uh, um, uh, Bernardo Silva. I saw Bruno Fernandes. And I'm watching them and I'm thinking, you can clearly see that without Ronaldo in this team, you are way better. Like They're all better players than Ronaldo I understand right now. Ronaldo was hindering the team. And I think Santos saw that. I think he just saw the team as a Ronaldo was a hindrance and they're going to be better without him. And it's not so much it was proved last night because I think he probably knew what was going to happen. Last night, you're looking at Portugal and you're thinking they're serious contenders now. And if Ronaldo doesn't play and he might come on, the only, the only way I can see Ronaldo getting game time in this World Cup now, Portugal are 1-0 down with five, ten minutes to go. Or if the two or three or four nil up in a game. Other than that, I don't see I don't see him getting a game, Joe. I don't see him playing. I don't see him being part of this Portugal team because he, honestly, I don't think he's good enough. I don't think he's good enough with or without the ball. I don't think he offers enough. Yeah, I think you're right. I think Santos knew it deep down, and he took the opportunity. It was brave nonetheless, though, because if it had blown up in his face, which yeah. can happen, then he would be forever the man who lost Portugal uh, the, you know, their final chance of winning a World Cup with Ronaldo and the team by dropping Ronaldo. Yeah. So it, it was very brave. Uh, but I mean, as you said, it worked um, beautifully. Uh, the interesting question now is, will Ronaldo look at Juventus manager, Manchester United manager, Portugal manager, and start to think to himself, maybe, maybe they could be right about me. And maybe I need to accept that I can be a brilliant no, no. substitute late on in games. No, he won't think, no, he he won't think that. He won't think that. Yeah, but at a so certain he point, he can't be that removed from reality. Somebody has to get a hold of him and say, you need to face facts here. You can't be this no, person he, anymore. Joe, he won't think that. You know, you know you, I, I, you're asking me the question that I think I honestly, honestly think you're playing devil's advocate where you're asking that question because you know the way that he is. You know how he's been across the course of his career. You've watched, basically, you've, you've grown up as a young man and you've watched Ronaldo's career. You know exactly the sort of personality but, that but, he is. Yeah, I, I take the point, but at, at a certain point, i.e. right now, the mountain of evidence becomes inignorable for yeah. Ronaldo. Well, no, but that is the case. That is exactly the case. He's, he's probably at this stage now, he's a good sub for Portugal. And he, he'll never, ever get that in his head. He'll never, ever feel that. But mm. you know what, Joe? I was at the game. I said I was at the game in Lasalle last night. The biggest cheer of the night was when Ronaldo warmed up during the second half. Sorry, the second biggest cheer was when Ronaldo warmed up. The biggest cheer was when Ronaldo came on the pitch. There is still this fixation of Ronaldo is coming onto the pitch and he buys into that himself. That's what he yeah. wants. He wants I think this they're, uh, huge cheer. They're all day trippers no, who are more concerned with their Instagram. No, they're new, I don't think they're fans. actual fans. And, and, no, exactly. And any true Portugal fan that watched that game last night could look me in the eye and have a conversation with me and tell me that uh, Cristiano Ronaldo is good for Portugal at this World Cup. Mm. Because or as, as, a start, as a starter, because there's no way, and like any football fan would understand it, would say there's no way he's any good for that team. And we clearly saw that last night. And I, I was just, I was watching the, the crowd last night and it become, it was, it was almost just a bit of a, a sideshow. It yeah. was like a circus around Ronaldo last night. And that's the way I saw it. It was just, all these fans are here. They're not real Portugal fans. They're not real football fans in, what, in, what, in how I viewed it last night. It was just so many people that wanted to tag Ronaldo on their Instagram account yes. or their Twitter account or whatever it was. And that's how I saw it. And that's what Ronaldo is now. R Ronaldo is... How, how many followers, John? I'm sure you tell me how many followers got I don't on Instagram. Know, but, but I don't know, but I agree with you. I got a record. I agree with you totally. Maybe, he, maybe, he, maybe, 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 maybe not as quite as many as you, but he, he's getting there somewhere along the line, yeah. He's become a tourist attraction at this stage. But his behaviour yeah, has been really 
really poor, to say the least. So he, he, just in the last couple of weeks, he's blown up his Manchester United contract to the point of being sacked, and they may well be suing him. He, uh, I mean, the Bruno Fernandes handshake spoke volumes. This, all this on the eve of a World Cup. The interview with Piers Morgan. And now he's yeah. spent the last couple of weeks looking for a new club. It seems Saudi Arabia is his only viable destination. Like, the guy is on a free... And nobody is taking it. Yeah. Can you imagine his mood at the moment? Yeah. Can you imagine his presence behind the scenes? All of this completely muddy in what should be a very happy, focused Portuguese camp. So I, I suspect Joel, it's everything. Joel, I, I suspect I, Santos is completely fed up with this guy. Yeah, and, and in his own head, he's probably thinking, well, I'm going to be the highest paid footballer in the world by a million miles. And I'm quite happy with that now at this stage of his career. And fair play to him because he, 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 you know, he deserves it for what he's achieved and... He's been incredible in everything that he's done. But if anybody would ever have an argument with me to try to tell me that Cristiano Ronaldo is in, on the same planet as as Lionel Messi, and anyone who's ever watched has ever watched the games over the last, well, I'm what I'm I'm 46 now, nearly 46, and I've watched I watched football since I was a kid, and I've loved watching Maradona, I've loved watching Zidane, I've loved, loved watching the real greats of this game. Cristiano Ronaldo, as a player, is not on, he's not on the same level of, of the, the guys who who we would all talk about as the greatest ever. He's the greatest goal scorer ever, and he found a way to be the greatest goal scorer ever. But as a player, he, he could never, ever compete with all the guys. And in his own head now, he's... Well, maybe he's delusional, whatever it would be. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what he's thinking in terms of where he's going to go now in his career. I, I generally think he's, he's, he's going to be quite happy to be the highest paid player in the world. That, I, that's you know, the way it's I, funny. See, I, I see him. I disagree with you on that. I think he's furious that here he is on a free transfer and his, his option is no. Saudi Arabia. This is akin to being dropped Joel, by that, Santos and Ten Hag. This Joel, is embarrassing Joel, Joel. for him. Joel, those options weren't there for him last summer when Man United wanted to let him go. Man United quite clearly wanted to just to, to say, look, you're done with us now. You're not going to play in our first team. And they were quite happy to think, well, you can go go, go to work wherever you want in the world. We, we will give you a free transfer. We will agree a fee that's going to be acceptable for this club that's going to come in for you. And nobody came in for him. Essentially, nobody came in because they knew that there's there's a lot around him. So now the only thing he's got is, I, as my stature, I'm going to be the highest paid player in the world. And I, I, I no, I, I take your point. You might be right, Joe. Honestly, you might be right. And, I, I don't see it like that. I, I just see him as a player that's, that was probably finished a long time before last season when he signed for Man United. And in terms of what, what you're going to give our team, like, and it, it has to come down to this, that if Portugal are going to be serious contenders in this World Cup, Cristiano Ronaldo cannot start a game because you are, not, you are carrying a player. Like if, you, if you look at Argentina and they think, well, we're going to carry Lionel Messi, Lionel Messi's producing, he's doing things that no one on that pitch can do. He's, he's, he's opening up games. Argentina are, are actually quite an average side. The way I look at Argentina, they're quite average. If you look at them in, in relation to France, England, um, Brazil, maybe even Portugal, they are not on the same level yet. Yeah, Messi, they're, 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 they're playing for him. They're playing for him. And they're, they're working harder than ever. I don't think Argentina are going, to world, are going to win the World Cup as much as I want them to win the World Cup. But... They're playing for Messi because they, they, they accept that they have to do special things to get him into the game because he can do special things. Ronaldo is not doing those special so, things. He's not doing totally everything that he did four or five years yeah, ago. agree with all that. So I have it in pretty good authority that he was sulking around Carrington in his last month in particular. Uh, so what is your sense? Who, 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 who told you that? Who no no you comment. That, what, give, give me your sense. Let's assume he's sulking You've right now. You've got to reveal your sources sometimes. Reveal no, you never sources. reveal your sources. I mean, if I was to reveal okay, all the sorry, things you... you had told me and, and, and put your name beside them, you know, you'd be in big trouble. You've done that to me many a time. Sometimes <laughs> I'm sat there and you've gone, Kev, by the way, this happened. And I'm like, I'm sat there thinking, I'm sinking in my chair thinking, <laughs> Joel, jeez, you're killing me here. But anyway, go on. Anyway, let's assume for a second he is sulking in Portuguese camp right now. You've been in dressing rooms with some interesting characters. Uh, what's your sense of how the Portuguese dressing room will treat him, will react to him if he is sulking? Um, I, I'd hope that they're on the cusp of something great, so they've got a chance. They have a chance. I think we've got to accept it that Portugal are a serious contender because of how they play and the players that they've got. We've got to accept they're a serious contender. And, and, and honestly, no, 
I've, I've got to maybe add something else to the to, to the debate here as well. So, I I play indoor indoor football, indoor soccer in Canada with a with a group of like forty lads, and we're all in in this WhatsApp group. And within that group, there's probably about fifteen of Portuguese descent. So they're all Portuguese. They're all they love Ronaldo, and they're all hammering me over the last like. 24, 48 hours about what I've said about Ronaldo. The feeling within Portugal or with uh, maybe outside Portugal to an extent, I don't know, is that Ronaldo is this this player who acted brilliantly last night. He, he was so good. What a man. What a guy because he, he'd been dropped and he stood up for the anthem. He respected his teammates. He did this. And I'm think, I'm looking at these lads with this the conversation that I'm seeing is happening in front of my eyes. I'm going to are you crazy? Like, do you really think that Ronaldo gives gives a crap about his teammates? Do you think Ronaldo gives a crap about what anyone's thinking about him or his coach thinks about him? He thinks about himself. That's all he thinks about. They, no, I, I think from again from what I have read within this group about from the guys that I'm friends with, they they, they hold Ronaldo up on a pedestal away above anybody else, right and so for what he's achieved. But they do, they, they, they're almost blind to the way Cristiano Ronaldo is. Yeah. And they, they will never, ever see that Cristiano Ronaldo within that camp will be a nightmare, first of all. You're asking the question about how, how will Ronaldo be and how will the other lads be. Yeah. Ronaldo will be a nightmare, Joe. You know, you know it. You know it. No, that's Everybody what I mean. So I'm wondering what, the, what, do, what do they do? Because even just on the well, glimpse of to, Bruno to, Fernandes they, 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 and the handshake, I suspect Bruno Fernandes isn't going to indulge the behaviour. But they, ha- they have to block out that noise and they have to block out... like. There's probably one or two players in that squad that maybe there's probably more than that actually, but there'll be a lot of players that will respect him, that will that will love him for what he's what he's given the game and how he's um, and his records and things like that. But this is your big chance, and like how how can you how can you you know go back to the way that he's been and I, I, and honestly, Joe, I think he's hindered that team. I think he hindered them at the Euros in 2020 or 20 like it was last year, as it turned out. Yeah. I think he hindered the team. I think that every single time, even when I was on air with you guys four years ago, every one of those players they wanted they were, they were trying to pass to Ronaldo early when it was never on. Yes, they, they were they, they, they used to they, or they used to as far as I could see, they were they were in awe of him and they were scared of him, so they wanted to get in the ball. If they didn't get in the ball early. And Ronaldo didn't do anything. No one gave a crap. But if he if they never passing the ball, they used to go into the shell. Now all of a sudden you've got Jao Felix, who last night was incredible. Watching him live, I was down more or less pitch, pitch side watching the game. Bernardo Silva, unbelievable. But um, Bruno Fernandes, incredible. William, incredible. Um, Rafael Guerrero. All these players were unbelievable last night. Like they, everyone seemed to be like free. Like. They, they can. They, there's no way they can ever go back to him. So yeah. all the players within that group have got to go. We, we've got a chance here of winning this tournament, and Ronaldo has got to be the sideshow that we're not going to even indulge. That's the way it's going to be, and yeah. I, that's the way that I would see it anyway. It's very interesting. I mean, and that this has all happened mid World Cup is fascinating. Just a quick word because I want to get your thoughts on Spain. A quick word on uh, Gonzalo Ramos hat trick. Uh, the World Cup is often life changing for certain yeah. players. For him, it is 21 years of age at Benfica. This was just his fourth Portuguese appearance. He only made his debut last month. He has scored 20 goals in 45 games for Benfica. He was pretty much the understudy to Darwin Nunes uh, last year. Now he's the main man. And last night was his coming-of-age party yeah. in front of the whole world. So pretty amazing. I mean, I presume we can't expect hat-tricks from Ramos every week, or can we? <coughs> I don't know. You tell me, Joe, on that one. Uh, surely not. No, that's not going to happen. Clearly that's not going to happen. But w- what I was impressed in last night, honestly, Joe was just his, his willingness off the ball. He continued just to run in behind, close down when they didn't have the ball. He caused so many problems for Switzerland at the back. They, they couldn't cope with him. Physically, they couldn't cope with him. And all of a sudden, you could see the rest of the players responding from it. They, they, they wanted to. They, they, they found themselves in pockets. They found themselves in holes. He, he gave them something that Ronaldo simply could not give them. He, he had energy for 90 minutes as well, although he, he was subbed off at what, 75 minutes, whatever it was. And he was he was actually quite annoyed when he got took off as well, Joe. He was like, I want to score five, six, seven, whatever I want to do. I, I still feel confident. So, I, I mean, he's got a goal, he's got a decent goal-scoring record at Benfica as well. If you look at his, if you look at his stats, it, it, to me, he looked like a player that's 
ready to go on to the next level. Who knows what's going to happen? I don't know. But within that Portugal side, he's way better for the players that surround him than Cristiano Ronaldo. Definitely way better. Okay, very good. Uh, Morocco, Spain. The Spanish plan of death by a thousand passes. Uh, Morocco were just fine afterwards. This was almost a parody of Tiki Taka. Football has moved on from this. This yeah. felt very, very dated yeah. on Spain's part. Yeah, I, I watched the game, Joe. So I watched the match. And then, as I said, I went to Portugal and Switzerland. And I, I, I saw stat, Joe. You probably got it in front of you. I think it was, I think Spain had 3,500 touches of the ball and they scored two goals. How how can how can that be the case? I mean, you, you, I, I see you probably Google now while while well, we're on. You'll be able to tell me the official stat. But it was over three thousand. They touched the ball over three thousand times, and they they scored two goals. Now, how the hell can Spain, given all the talent that they've got within midfield and various other areas, create so little against Morocco? And I I, I said it for a reason, Joe. I, I I said I fancied Morocco to win the game. It wasn't anything. It wasn't anything scientific. It wasn't anything that was like groundbreaking. I just saw Morocco having a bit of steel about them. They've got a bit. Of, they've got a bit of balls. They've got players who are great runners off the ball. They've got steel in the team. They could, they've got players that can pass the ball, and they'll cause problems on the transition. Yet they've got a way of forming back into a position of a five-four-one, four-five-one at, at times. They, they, they can change. Um, they can change the shape of the team. And I thought. Fans this uh, this Moroccan team just to just to be able to win the game and it went down to penalty so it was 50-50 at the end of the day no 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 bother with that yeah. but Spain Spain are just not a good side to watch Joe they're not great to watch and they scored all those goals against Costa Rica and I've seen Costa Rica a lot probably too much as it turns out throughout <laughs> um, the qualifying and they're they're, they're they're Joe they're terrible they're they're such a bad team how have they beat Japan how have they got a result against Japan and, and and almost went on and beat Germany, I do not know, because they are so bad defensively. And any team that just wants to make a few runs in behind, you're going to score goals. I can guarantee it against Costa Rica because they are that bad. Right. And Spain just continued to pass the ball against uh, Japan, against uh, Germany and against Morocco and just pass the ball. So I was never, ever going to use that Costa Rica game as a, a judgment of Spain. Mm. And... Morocco are comfortable. That's the way I saw it last night. Yep. I, I thought, I, I, I tell you so many times, Joe, you can control a, a game without being in possession. And that's that's the way I thought it was with Morocco last night. They had a couple of openings in Spain, but they never really created chances. And I know I know Bono in goal was the hero because of the penalty saves, but how many times was he seriously tested across 120 minutes? And he wasn't. Seriously tested, he wasn't. And yep. Spain... I think Spain have to have a serious recheck, and you asked that question at the start. I think they have to serious rethink about how they're going to open up teams because they don't play with a nine. Morata last night, Morata was come short, and everything was in front of Morocco. It was so easy for them, mm. and I think a lot of teams will be able to cope with Spain. They'll, they'll probably breeze through qualification so many times, but when it comes to the big games in big tournaments, I think we'll see the, the, the same Spain. In the next Euros, the next World Cup, I think we'll see the same spin unless they change the, the thinking and how they're going to score goals. And Camille, what did you think of Larry Mullen and the edge at centre half? Oh, t- top class, yeah, top class. With, Don't with clip that anyway. You, Joe, I tell you, honestly, I do think that. With or without you, I think they'll be great. <laughs> um, so, you, if, if Spain had a, a top centre forward, would they change the way they play? Like what? Because they're doing a lot right. You know, clearly they're doing a lot right. It's just it never seems to happen. That bit of creativity, Joe, wait, wait, that, that Joe, cutting a side Joe, open. Joe, even if you don't have a striker, though, surely to God you're going to have to have someone that's going to continuously run in behind. I, I, I looked at uh, looked at, at Portugal last night. So you're live at the game and you're a bit different. Like uh, you, you see a different side to a game when you go and watch a game live to watching a game on TV. And watching Ramos just continuously run off the shoulder of Switzerland's defenders. Yeah. And in fairness, like Akanji is top class, Joe. Akanji is a really good defender. And he, he kind of like smashed him early on. He just hit him. And you could see Akanji going like, jeez, what, what the hell's going on here? What do, do you see that from Spain? Do you see Spain being able to have that physical presence? And it's not even, it's not even a physical presence. It's just someone that's just going to be awkward. Someone that's going to be that annoying man that's going to hurt an opposition and going to go, as I said, run off the shoulder and free up the best players in the areas that's going to hurt a team. They don't have that. And as I said, over 3,000 touches of the football and two goals. It's not good enough for the quality no. they've got. And no. 
you have to ask serious questions of, of what's happening within Spanish football. Well, they seem to just keep be producing the same type of player. There's no variation in the type of players they're producing. They're all brilliant technical yeah, I mean, players I, of a certain I mean, kind as well. Joe, let, let's be honest, like Gabi, Gabi and Pedri, like the, the, the kids and how good are they? Yeah. You, you watch those players and you think, Jesus, these guys could be incredible. It could be anything they, they, they want to be. But it, it, it's in the final third. And I, I, I've kind of seen it with certain teams as well in the final third. I, I said it so often about the, the, the USA. Everyone's telling me about America, this team. And I, I Joe, I'd seen them probably 20 times. The USA, and I'm, I, every time I watch the USA, and I'm watching them going, this team have nothing. They, mm. they, they would never hurt me. If I was playing against the USA, I'd be so happy. And they had one of the best midfielders, one of the best midfields in general, the, the midfield three in the World Cup. You could quite easily say they've got some brilliant midfield players. But up front, and everyone talks about, um, what's the boy at Chelsea's name, Joe? Pulisic. I have forgot his name now. Um, Pulisic. Joe, he, he does so many brilliant things. He works so hard. He's never going to take a shot on. He's never going to put a cross into the area. He just doesn't. He just doesn't do anything that yeah. I'm watching him going. He could hurt me, you know. What? And I think he could outrun me. Yes, he could outrun me. If if I'm one on one against him, if I was a left back, he could hurt me. But he, he's never going to really try to hurt me because everything is coming inside and that everything's is, um, in front of the that, opposition. That is a, a feature. It feels increasingly of football of modern day football. Yeah, and. And, and the USA, within, within North America, because obviously I'm, I'm, I'm part of North America, I'm saying this USA team, the best we've ever produced. And I, I think you've got so many limitations defensively. Up front, you're never going to score a goal, yet you've got some brilliant plays in midfield. And I take it, Tyler Adams, Musa. I think, I think McKenney's got limitations to an extent, but I think he's got something where I think a team's going to take him and... Re, I know he means at Juve. He's going to take him ahead of Juve, but... I, I think he's got something. I, I quite like him. I think because I, I think he has a bit a bit about him. But up front, I'm watching him and I'm thinking you've got you've, you actually don't have anything about you. You, you, you maybe you're too nice. Yeah. Um, as a striker, as a number nine, I don't think you're going to have anything that's going to really hurt me. I'd be more than happy playing against you, and you, you're never really going to cause me any problem. Mm. And everyone's everyone's raving about this brilliant USA team, and they've got nothing that's ever really going to hurt a, a, a really good team. And that's maybe, as you say, Joe, that may be the thing across world football right now. Everyone's focusing so much on keeping the ball and who is going to excite me, who's going to be the guy that's going to excite me and get me off, yes. get me off my chair. And a lot, a lot of it isn't like that. Yeah, and no, I think you're right. You see, I think yeah, and, a... that, and, that, and that's why killing Mbappe is so good because well, we'll he excites him. you when he plays. But he does excite you though, doesn't he? For sure. There is an academy aspect to it all of this we're going to take a very short break you're going to tell me who's going to win all these quarterfinals in just a moment so in this whatsapp <laughs> uh, in this whatsapp group you play indoor football are you like the ronaldo of the situation you played at the highest level you're the main man yeah, can't run anymore that. well no I, it's, it's a winter league it's a winter league as well so i've gone away because the snow hits now and you obviously can't play outside so i've gone away now for four weeks while i'm over here yeah. and the guys are all pissed at me because I'm, i've gone away and um I'm just like kind of throwing bombs into all these guys that love Portugal and love Ronaldo and saying like, you'll never win a World Cup if Ronaldo plays. So now you've got Ronaldo on the team, you've got a chance and they're not happy. They're do you, not happy do you behave themselves. Do you but, behave like Ronaldo in this football league though? No running, lots of I, sulking, give me the ball. I just play in midfield, give me the ball, I'm quite happy. Give me the ball and yeah, right. let, let's see how he goes. Yeah. Run the game from I'm, the centre circle. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, at my age now, Joe, I'm a bit like you when I was playing with you ten years ago. I'm not going to run. I'm not going to, you know. I've got, a, I've got a little bit. Sorry, of you're breaking up there, Kev. We'll, we'll get your line sorted I'm out not, there during the ad break. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, stay on the line. Two seconds. We're back with you. We're going to get your thoughts on the quarterfinal. Kevin Coban with us on the line. Our football show coverage brought to you by Sky. Get more from the sports you love on Sports Extra with BT and Premier Sports. Kevin Coban, staying with us. Back in one sec. Football on Off The Ball With Sky Proud partner and supporter of the Republic of Ireland Women's National Football Team This is News Talk Football on Off The Ball With Sky Get more of the sports you love on Sports Extra With BT Sport and Premier Sports This is News Talk Welcome back. Kevin Kilban is still with us. Just to say, by the way, if any members of his WhatsApp indoor football team are listening, you can add off the ball on Twitter us any and all videos of Kev in action. I think we'd all like to see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> we'll see. We'll see about that. We'll see. So Friday, we've Croatia, Brazil, we've Netherlands, Argentina, Saturday, Morocco, Portugal, and then England against France. As we said yeah. at the top, this all sets be- up very, very before, nicely. Before I go, go on, on go on, go on. Think, you, you tell me who you think is going to win because Oof. you're very opinionated when I talk to you before I come in. Just tell me who you think you're going to, who you, who's going to win, and I'll try and pick apart or agree with what, what you say. Okay, Brazil is the easy first answer. Netherlands, fast, Argentina. Fast Kev, I'm torn here. Who do here. you think? I'm torn here in Netherlands, Argentina, because yeah. I hate both of them. I think they're both rubbish. Yeah, I agree. I, I wouldn't disagree with that, actually. But yeah, so who's I win? don't know. I think it's going to be very negative. Given the way his tournament is going, perhaps Messi does something to win Jesus. the game 1-0. So you, maybe you've Argentina. Been you've been around me too long. I think Holland will win. I think Holland will win the game. Um, but I'm with you. I think it's going to be such a bad game to yeah. watch that. I don't, hopefully I, it's not, because... Two top, two, you know, two top nations. But I think I agree. I do. I agree. So I'm with you. I'm with you on that one. What we can Go certainly on, agree is on. Brazil to beat whichever of those two comes through. In the sense. Um, well, I, well, if Argentina get through it, because I do think it's a 50-50 game, as you're saying. Argentina beat Brazil in the Copa America final and they kicked lumps out of Brazil. They made it scrappy, made it like a horrible match. So... I don't know. I, I, I probably still think that might be 60-40. It's not as conclusive as maybe you say. Okay. But um, I, I, talent-wise, I think Brazil should win the next two games. Yeah, yeah. so you, so I'm with so you agree with Brazil, me. You I, agree I, me. Like, we I can't be here all day. I, I, I can't Brazil, give qualifications. I'm just giving you my answer. All right. Br- you, Br- Brazil make a final. Brazil make a okay. final. I'm with you. I'm with you. Okay. Uh, Morocco, Portugal, don't have a clue, genuinely. Don't know how much to read into that Portuguese performance. Portugal. No, Portugal win. Portugal really? Portugal win okay. three or four, I think, that game. Three, three or four. four. Yeah. I do. I, th- I think I think they'll score at least two. I, I, I'm going over the top maybe a little bit, but I think it's going to be comfortable enough. I think Portugal will win that handily enough, yeah. Okay. I'm Definitely. I'm hesitant there because I didn't see Morocco against Spain and I haven't seen enough of them this tournament. So I'm, I'm, no, I'll, no. I'll bow to you there. I, 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 I think so. I th- I, I've, seen, I've seen Portugal and that's why I thought they beat Spain because I saw them play Canada. I saw them play against uh, Croatia and uh, Belgium. Yes. And I thought they, they, they were actually the best team in that group. Yeah. So and it's it's been proved that way, but like Portugal too good. So Portugal win that game. I think two or three. Yeah. Very good. England France, of course, uh, the ultimate winners of the tournament involved in this game, who, who, and that's because Kevin who, who, football is coming home. Yeah. Well, I know, but you're a big England fan, Joe. You know, you and I have. Uh, I'm hoping that I get more uh, of a reaction out of you. Um, England France for real. Uh, I really like England. I do think they're excellent. I really do. Uh, but, I, I don't expect anything different but, from you, though. It's, all, it's, always, it's always about England with you, Joe. <laughs> Jeez, come on. Jeez, you've got to give me something back sometimes. Give me something. Like I lived in England my whole life, so come on, Joe. But I think, um, Fra- I think gun to my head, France. I think gun to my head, France. But um, there's no shame in England yeah, losing to this I, French team. Yeah, but I, like, I'm, I'm yeah. really torn on that one. I think I'd almost back I, whoever I, I wins that to win it. the tournament, Kev. I think that... Um, oh, do I you? wouldn't be. I, I, I don't think you're too. Joe, you know what? You're not bad. Honestly, your predictions these days. You must, you must be listening to me too much these days. I don't know. Um, I, I think whoever wins that wins it as well. Yeah, I think both England and France could beat Brazil. That, they're the only two sides I think in this tournament now that's left that could beat them. Maybe, maybe Portugal. Maybe, maybe Portugal. That's my only thing that I'd look at that. But I think whoever wins this this game yeah. probably goes on and wins it. Do you know, so, do you know what over here? My, oh. I'm curious to get your thoughts my over heart, there. My, my heart says France. My heart says France. Well, I know I'm that. I know that. I'm, I, certainly here, I feel England are being underrated because of just that general uh, feeling towards England. And I feel Argentina are being yeah. overrated because people's uh, love of Messi. But I, I'm curious for your thoughts out there. Are people talking England up more? Because England aren't being talked enough up here, I think. I think they've been very good and they are very good. So what's, your, what's, what's the mood out there? Yeah. What are people saying out there? I, th- I think the feeling is that, what you're saying there. I think that I, I don't. Th- every England fan I've spoke to, they don't want to get too excited. Sure. I, I, I get the feeling some, somehow with this England support around this team that wh- whenever the World Cups have come around, they, they're reluctant to start singing it's coming home after they beat Panama 6 or whatever it was at the last World Cup, after they beat Iran. I think, but I always think it, that there's somewhere somewhere under the surface they're ready to sprout these real England fans and they're going to start telling you it's coming home and we're going to beat everybody so we, so if they beat France I guarantee it'll be it's coming home we're going to win the World Cup and they'll probably get beaten in a semi then against Portugal that's probably the way that I would see it so um, I, I, I've still got my 
Irish hat on to an extent. And part of me would always say that I don't want England to win. And I don't. And I have to be honest about that. I don't. But England are better this time. England are better. Yeah, and that, 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 that France game is 50-50, Joe. I, I do think that Kylian Mbappé is the best player on the pitch. If they can stop him, I think they'll be OK. But I don't know if they're going to be able to stop him. And, and it's not my heart ruling my head here. I, I genuinely think that France have got too much for England. I think, I think they have. I think France is going to beat England. Do you? Uh, yeah. What do you think Southgate is going to do tactically? I'm interested in this, what he's going to do. Is he, is he going to... Because there's, there's potential for him to go with the back three and play Kieran Trippier. So he's got a bit of stability with Walker, right side centre-half and Trippier as the right wing-back just to try and take the, you know, take the Kylian Mbappé effect away. If he goes four, which I think he should do, and he goes two, two at, the, at the base of midfield, he could go Henderson and, and uh, Rice at the, at the base. I think he's taking something out of Bellingham's game, playing as a 10. Because I don't think he can play like that. I think he's not great when he's back to goal. I think he has to be a player that's going to be as an eight, that's going to be running on from midfield. Mm. So I, 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 do, I think he's probably got to play the same system. I think he's got to play 4 3 3. I think he's got to play Rice with probably Henderson and Bellingham either side of Rice with Henderson's mindset, his natural mindset to come back and help against Mbappe. And then what are you going to do up front? Are you going to play Rashford or are you going to play uh, Saka? I think he'll play Saka. There's part of me that I think he's probably better off going with Rashford because I think Rashford might be a goal threat. I think he's going to be able to play the other side of Hernandez. Mm. I think he'll do better against Hernandez, to be honest with you. And then on the other side, he's probably, is he going to play Foden? Yes, yeah, he should play he is, Foden because yeah. I, 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 st I still believe Foden is the, the best player. Yeah. But if, if, if he plays 4-2-3-1, I don't think he's going to play Foden off the back of that. I think he might change and, and bring Foden out. So I think he'll play 4-3-3. Sit, uh, Declan Rice sit in and play the guys around him ahead of him and I think he's probably going to play the same team if he does that I think they're going to get beat so and I think he'll do I think he'll probably play into France's trap and I think France will have too much for them Why can't you play Foden in a 4-2-3-1? Why can't he be left of that three? No I don't think I don't think it's a case of not being able to do that I don't think um, Southgate will do that and I think he might bring Mount into the team I think he might play Mount just to bring energy into the side so it becomes a 4-5-1 when you don't have the ball Yeah to be, fa to be fair to Mount, I, he's, he's, I, he's, he's, he is maligned. But if you watch Mount, he's generally in very good positions with and without the ball. Mount played well the first game, Joe. Mount played well against Iran. And he was the catalyst for England getting forward. I thought he played really well. He played as a 10 in the game because Bellingham played alongside Rice at the base. He played 4-2-3-1 in that game. And, and Mount was the catalyst to start England's press. He started to do really well when they didn't have possession. And... Maybe you could argue that he was a bit unlucky to be to be dropped, but he didn't play well in the second game against the US because they took Rice out of the game with how the US played. It was only when Henderson actually came on that England started to get a bit of success in the match. So mm. um, I, I don't think... I, I, what, what I'm saying here, I, I'm just looking at al al yeah, yeah. alternatives to what Southgate could do. I don't think he's going to play Mount. I think he's going to play uh, Foden. I think it's the right option to play Foden. He should play 4-3-3 because I think England's best option to win the game is go and score goals. They have the best attacking lineup, I believe. Five, six, seven players up front. I think yeah. they've got way better than France. I think they've got better than, than, than uh, Brazil. So do I. Um, but they don't have the, the outstanding player. They don't have the outstanding player. They don't have Neymar. They don't have Mbappe. And it might come down to the, the one outstanding player that wins the game in those tight well, that's, matches. That's the interesting thing. Does the outstanding player do it? Or England, who've had, I think, eight goal scorers, and therefore any of them can chip in with a goal, does that trump the outstanding yeah. player who can be nullified? But then again, sometimes the outstanding player can't be nullified, and Mbappe's as likely well, as anyone to be unstoppable. You know so that, like, it's so what, beautifully Joe, poised. I, I think, I think Luke Shaw even mentioned it. And I think he's quite... Mind I think most modern-day players are mindful of the threats of, of opposition. Luke Shaw said in his press conference, I think it was two days ago, he said, well, look, if we go and concentrate on Mbappe and we think, well, we're going to, like, double, double, uh, man double mark him and things like this, Dembele's been brilliant in this World Cup. I think France's most underrated player at this World Cup, or maybe player that's gone on the radar, is absolutely Anton Griezmann. Oh, totally Griezmann agree, has been yeah. amazing. Yeah. Joe, I'm telling you now, he, I, the first game, I was mesmerised watching him because just for his work rate, just for his passing ability, the set-piece ability that he brings to it. And then the second game, I was like, he's got better. He, he was left out in the third match and then he came back in for the, third game, uh, for the fourth game, sorry. And I was like, oh my God, he's on it. He looks sharp, he looks fit. 
and maybe that's because we've not been playing at Atletico. He's not played a lot of the games with mm. the contract arrangement that was in place with Barcelona. That he couldn't play the games and he had to come on at 60 minutes. Maybe that's it. Maybe he, he feels that's the, It's the perfect way to get ready for World Cup is just play half hour a week and you're nicely fit then. And, yeah. uh, you're, I agree yeah. totally. And Philippe Auclair was on this week making the same points as you. And in fairness, giving credit to Deschamps who without Pogba and without Kante had to come up with a solution and a balance in midfield. Yeah. And that Griezmann move is a, is a touch of genius really in some respects. So. Yeah. And, and we, we've probably all seen Griezmann always play on the right hand side coming onto his left foot. Yeah. He plays as a 10 now. Maybe even as an eight at times, he, yeah. put, he comes in a four-three-three, and Joe, his work rate as an eight is unbelievable. Like he, he he's a box-to-box player. He's clear. Look at look at the goal. I think it was the Mbappe goal in the last match they played. Look, look who cleared that ball in the six-yard box. He hooked it over his shoulder. It was a great touch from from uh, Giroud. He freed up Dembele. Dembele played Mbappe. Mbappe scored. It was actually Antoine Griezmann that worked back into the six-yard box. And I've been so impressed with Griezmann and. And maybe, maybe I even thought, I, I, it's not that I thought little of him because I, I knew he's top class, but I didn't think he had the work rate yeah, around him. I didn't think he had maybe, maybe, maybe the, the steel. That's, yeah, you, you're putting words in my mouth now, Joe. You, you, know, you know what I'm thinking, but he's, he's got that bit about him. He's got a way about him where he's tackling back. Yeah. His work rate is as good as anybody. And Griezmann is a player that England might not necessarily concentrate on that could open them up. And mm. if they concentrate too much on Mbappe, it might be Usman Dembele, it might be Antoine Griezmann that, that hurt England. And that's that's why I think France have got too many different options that might hurt England more than the other way around. Well, look, it's going to be super interesting. We're pretty much out of time. So that's the Malloy Kilban final in effect on uh, Saturday evening. That's how we're framing yeah, this. Yeah, you, 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 you put thoughts in my mind tonight, Joe. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be thinking about Joe Malloy when I'm doing the analysis. Listen, yeah, the don't, days, don't, be read, don't be reading my work in the Irish Times next week, all right? You <laughs> come up with your own stuff. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think you're reading my stuff. You, you're, you're, just, you're just actually re- rejigging what I've actually said. But that, anyway, that's, that's another day. Um, yeah. I hope you're having a good time. We'll catch up soon. Thanks so much for uh, checking good. in. I know it's a day off, so appreciate it, man. Take care. Good man, Joe. I'm, right. I'm, I'm going to have a drink tonight. I'm, I'm, I'm with Dan McDonald tonight, so I've, I've not seen Dan in three years, so I'm going to have a drink with Dan. The oh, first God. beer I've had since I've been here, so it'll be, it'll be a, a good night. So we'll look forward to it. Anyway. Super, super. Enjoy. Thanks, man. Take care. Good Ken man. Band Th- there. Thanks, Joe. In Doha, our football coverage with thanks to Sky. Get more from the sports you love on Sports Extra with BT Sport and Premier Sports. Football on Off the Ball with Sky. Proud partner and supporter of the Republic of Ireland women's national football team. This is News Talk.